Hello friends, welcome to the part 11 of this tutorial series. In this part, we will look at the authorization functionality of this uh, application and we would like to uh, constrain the access to only authorized users. So we want all these routes under the to-dos should only be accessible to an authorized user and the user who is logging in should only get his own to-dos and should only be able to modify his own to-dos. So to do that, we need few things. First of all, we would need to create a new strategy file here, which we will be exporting to other modules. I'll name it JWT custom strategy dot yes. And this strategy, I'll export a class, the same name, and this will extend the passport strategy uh, class from NestJS passport package. And this requires a strategy which we can import from the passport JWT package. So once this is done, you can simply call the constructor and inject the repo here, which will be in our case user entity. That's the uh, repo we are going to interact with. Let's create a private repo variable uh, repository user entity. In the super, you need to define some uh, uh, some options. So the JWT from request, we want to extract JWT from the header as bearer token and the secret or key should be the same as the one you define in your auth module this long string that you see here this is the same secret we want to use here otherwise the authorization would fail and once you extend a class from passport strategy you also need to define a validate method here validate the token and here to ex uh, expect a payload of type uh, username of which will have a string. So I'll simply extract the username from payload. Okay, because so this will have payload.username, so I'll simply extract it. And with this username, I can try to find a user from my database. Await this dot repo dot find one the username. So if I happen to find a user or not, I mean, <coughs> if I cannot find a, new, uh, a user, I'll throw the uh, unauthorized exception error or else I'll return the user. So this means my, auth my uh, authentication was successful and a user was found. With this in place, I'll also create another file here that will be my custom decorator so that I can fetch the user the currently logged in user with decorators and the way I will do it is by referencing the official doc I'll name the file this user.decorator and I'll simply copy the code from here this, you, you will find this code in the official docs under the custom decorator section so it will be user.decorator and paste the code here so I'm simply extracting the request from this execution context variable using this method and I'm sending the user object from there. So let's say we want to uh, protect the to do's uh, the whole of the whole to do's route. I'll simply go to, to the class where I have the controller decorator and just beneath it I'll use the use guards decorator. Again, it's uh, imported from NestJS common library. And this takes the guard. So use the auth guard that comes with NestJS passport package. And as soon as you do this, and you go to your postman. So in, in my login method, I created a, a small snippet here. So this line of code actually stores my uh, JWT token in a 
global variable with its name and you can see the variable here so that whenever i hit login and a new token gets generated this will automatically get updated and then i can simply use it like this so i go to my login i hit uh, my username is tom i hit send guess there and now if i do not use any token and i try to access all to do's i'll i'll get this error because it says cannot read property challenge of undefined okay so it says in order to use default strategy please ensure to import password module in each place so we have to go to auth module because we are using the password model here only so we'll simply export it in the exports array and also we need to provide the jwt custom strategy in providers as well as in the exports array and then you simply need to import it in the to do module and in the under the imports array like this and hit save not be any errors now with uh, with no authentication header authorization header I, if i hit send i'll get unauthorized okay i can't access any any routes here but now if i choose change it to bear a token and replace this with the token variable i hit send i get all the to do's here but now the problem is that i'm logged in with uh, tom but i'm also seeing a to do for mario i should not so let's check how we can restrict that to do that we need to get the current user and we have already created the custom decorator so let's use it user and user of type user entity and we'll pass it in the method here but now we need to modify this method a little bit so here we are expecting user entity okay but now we cannot use this okay because we don't have a relation between the user entity and the to do's so to do that we need to open the to do entity this is a user entity and the to do dot entity to do's dot entity where is that let me check here okay so let's decide what should be the relationship so one user can have many to do's but one to do can only be linked to one user account so this is one to many and that's many to one so from user it's one to many and whenever you define one to many you should always have the many to one at the other other end okay so this is many to one but here you need to have some sort of mapping so let's create a column with the name user this is of type user entity and also i'll create another column to store the user id here the name user id of type number so this will be okay like this this is many to one and this is to do's to do entity array let's finish this so we'll create the arrow function here arrow function which will point to the type of function or target it's my to do entity because i'm, I'm inside the user file so i'll point to the to do entity and in the inverse method that's the reverse method this will be to do or to do uh, i need to pass the variable here so this is to do so to do dot user it and in my to do's entities this is my user entity it's pointing to and in the inverse this will be the user and the user will have user dot to do's so once you create this relationship make sure you go to your database and delete both the tables it yes okay save the changes and check the tables again we'll have a foreign key here 
the name user ID and this will have nothing. So next we go here in my to do service. I need to change this method a bit. So to get all the tasks, this will I need to create a query. So now I'll create a variable name query. And to build this query, I'll not write SQL statements manually. I'll instead use the query builder which, which comes as a part of this repository class. I'll go, I'll say await this dot repo dot create query builder. And let's give it an alias to do anything you want. Okay. Now use this query to build the query like query dot where and I'll use back text say to do dot user ID that's the same attribute which I defined here the column and I defined it so that I can use it in my query builder. So equals to colon user ID. So th this is a placeholder or a variable which can replace here like this this is the id that i'm getting from my currently logged in user i'll try that and i'll execute the query now so await query dot get many so if it works then fine otherwise i'll throw an error it says pro new internal server error no to do found Okay. Then not found exception. Okay. That's it uh, for the get to dos, and let's just give it a give it a try. So I'm logged in with Tom. I don't have any to do. Okay, mm -hmm. it's unauthorized. I don't have any user. Okay. Let's log in with let's register with Tom first. This is my first ID, and I also register Mario. I log in with Tom and I create a new to do. My auth header use the token here. The body, let's say this is Tom. Tom to do one. Hit send. Do not create it. Something went wrong. Something went wrong. Okay, let's see what. Body title Tom to do. Oh yeah, I I know what. Here, so you're creating a to do without a without the user ID. So let's quickly go to the controller. Copy the same code here. Go to create and paste it there and just provide the user and go to the service provide the user here the entity and simply say to do dot id equals to user dot id save the changes go back here hit send oops something went wrong oops So I'm authenticated, which is good. And here, something went wrong. Hmm. And let's so log error stack. Save. Okay, let's see here. Field user ID does not have a default value. dot user id my bad now hit save perfect tom to do one tom to do two now log in with mario mario create 
here mario to do one and mario to do two so now if you go to all to do's you hit send see nothing okay let's check here to do dot user id user id and this is how it should work oh i'm not returning anything sorry my bad to do controller there we go send logged in with mario here getting all to do's for mario when i log in with tom and i hit send get only the to do's belonging to tom okay so let's do the same thing for uh, the patch method and delete method here so we'll copy it from the create uh, parameters we'll copy the user and we'll pass it here and Go to the delete method here. So we'll try to we'll try to get a result from here. Await this dot repo dot delete and id will be the id that i receive and the user id should be user i need to pass the user object here the entity the user dot id you don't need to use a query builder here because this automatically resolves into a where clause and if this result dot affected rows is equals to zero, that means nothing got deleted. So row new not found exception uh, to do not deleted or else return success to Similarly, for the update, we expect the user here, user entity, and we'll get the to do first. So, await this dot repo. Dot find one and I'll try to find the to do with the ID here. And when that is done, I'll to do dot status equals to status. Then here I'll try to do dot save or this dot repo dot save to do or let's say to update to do uh, criteria is
uh, let's say this is entity should have to do dot save method let's see if this works or not and return to do gonna press this and save it update id status yep so here we need to pass the user of my uh, user entity i'll copy it from here save it now okay so update to do send unauthorized i'm logged in with tom my to do will be three authorized l here and my come to do is one two logged in with tom authorized okay is unauthorized okay because here in the auth uh where a token and one something went wrong so this save method is not working uh in the to do service so let's not do it like this let's stick to our old method uh wait or return await and do everything okay so here i am expecting user of type user entity the criteria is id and user id is equals to user dot id okay perfect let's see okay it worked now if i change the status to done that is not valid okay i need to complete it works i can go back here it's completed now if mario logs in and tries to update to do one it won't work it's not working but he can change his own to do's it wip it worked there you go perfect and delete again if he goes to delete tries to delete some other to do Unauthorized, but if it tries to do not delete it and try to delete its own to do, then it's true. Go back to database, refresh, it's gone now. This is how you authorize users based on their currently logged in user account and limit the results to match only that particular user ID. I hope you have liked it and if you have any suggestions or comments please put that in the comment section below in the next video we will start working on the front end the angular i'll see you there so please stay safe and stay healthy and keep learning thank you have a wonderful day Bye bye